eyes are on inflation right now. The latest report out on Friday saw the highest increase in consumer prices that we've seen since 1982. And joining us to talk more about that and more national politics is former state Senate President Mike Karadopoulos. Good to see you, Mike. How are you? Good morning, Amy. You know, and inflation concerns, uh, we're talking about more to pay for housing, for transportation. We just had a story this morning about how new cars will cost you the most ever. Uh, what is happening here? Why are we seeing these numbers climbing so high? Well, a great question, Amy. It is incredibly frustrating people, especially around the holidays when food prices, fuel prices, rent prices are all higher. And I think you just got to go to the basic economics when you have too many dollars following too few in items. But right now with the uh, global supply chain problem, et cetera, when the government's spending so much money, there's not as many supplies available, prices will rise. And so we're feeling this bite big time right now. And you feel for folks, especially in the middle class, lower middle class, who rely on those gas uh, dollars to get in there and get to work because gas prices are up 58% during this time period. And this is a real crunch. That means not such a nice Christmas for a lot of people. How do we fix this? I mean, is this, I don't, is there a way, there's no quick fix, obviously, Mike. No, there's not. And a great point, as you brought up, is 1982, we had this similar problem. What they did back in 1982 in Ronald Reagan's first year term in office is that they tightened up the money supply, meaning it, it made it harder for us to gain dollars. I mean, they tried to reduce spending. They did the same scenario where they made interest rates go up. These are the things they're going to have to do if inflation continues. We all hope that they can break this supply chain crisis, that there'll be more supplies up, not so many dollars chasing it. That should bring down the prices but until you break that supply chain because again a supply chain is not just goodies for Christmas it means gasoline it means the basic things that build houses etc to increase the amount of housing available so it's not an easy fix but when the government spends too much that's the concern that a lot of people have because that's the thing we can control right now we can decide to spend more or we can decide to spend less I want to talk about crime because it is becoming a major issue. It has been for a little while now. We're talking San Francisco, Chicago, Minneapolis. We were just doing some stories about Chicago this morning, talking about uh, right in the middle of the day on Saturday, a couple of guys uh, broke in. They were actually just walked right into a car dealership, smashed a glass case, stole a million dollars worth of watches. There were children and people just standing there in broad daylight. I mean, it, it's getting brazen. Uh, that's the word, brazen. I mean, these folks, they, these are usually career criminals. These people are saying, hey, we're going to take advantage of these law changes, especially in major cities. These are the cities that are people been pushing for defund the police, like Minneapolis. Now they're actually their police budgets up because crime is so high. People are getting very concerned. We all saw that tragedy up in Wisconsin when a guy who was a career criminal was led out of jail just one day after, again, beating up his girlfriend. This is the situation where where you have to get tough on crime. If not, these are bad people, and it persists on all types of crime. And we're seeing this across major cities, and it's going to really impact the financial backing of these cities because people are not going to want to come into these areas that meet these dollars, especially in holiday times. Uh, I want to talk briefly about this UPenn swimmer. Um, it, th he was swimming as a male in 2019, and then he went through the transition process and uh, is now a female and is now breaking big records as a, a female swimmer for the University of Pennsylvania. And Title IX was designed to help women get in that equal footing with men in college athletics. Now you have a swimmer who just two years ago was an all Ivy League swimmer for the men. Now he's on the girls team or the women's team. He's crushing up people by in, in the last race by 34 seconds. It's really frustrated a lot of the fellow competitors who are saying, we just can't compete with this individual. And it really is a shame because people work their entire career to get into this position. Now they start a race knowing they have no chance of winning. They really need to look at this issue on the fairness. Because once you look at fairness, you have to look at it in this way, that let everyone have the rights until you impact others. Clearly, this is impacting some young ladies who work so hard to compete at the college level. Yeah, I was reading an interview with one of the female swimmers who, who competes with her, and she said that behind the scenes, they all know it's not fair, but they said that publicly they have to pretend like they're happy about it, and, and she said it's just a heartbreaking situation. So The political correct police yeah. right now. Yeah, Take we'll time. be hearing lots more about it, I'm sure. Former State Senate President Mike Karadopoulos, thank you so much, and we'll see you again in our 8 o'clock hour. Thank you, Amy. It is now 748. Coming up next right here on Good Day Orlando this morning.